In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my EDC knives and a few other knives that are not technically an everyday carry type of knife, but these are the ones that every morning I come up to this little rack and I choose one of my knives to take out the door with me in that day. Sometimes it's just by feel or what I'm what I'm wanting to go with that day. Sometimes it's function. Sometimes I just feel like having a knife that I can fidget with. So let's go over those now. Let's get into the video. This is actually the first video with this new setup with uh, the backdrop and the lights and all the stuff. Um, so let me know down in the comments what you think. I'm a photographer and videographer for a living. So why not put a little bit more effort in and give it a try? So let's get into the knives here. I've got my knives and then I've got a couple other ones, one that I keep in my truck and one bigger knife that I really have no purpose for, but I just wanted it. So um, I'll show you those at the end. Let's just start off with, this is the just a plain blacked out Benchmade bug out. A lot of you guys probably have one of these. Um, if you don't have a bug out, I, I would encourage you to spend the money. They're usually somewhere around 180 bucks or less. I think this is the smaller one, right? This isn't the giant bug out. And you can see I, I don't keep it pristine a little bit. It doesn't have much wear on there. I could wipe that off. But um, they're just so light. They're so thin. Look at how thin that thing is. Meaning uh, not the blade, of course, is thin, but just the, the carry. Uh, it carries really nice and deep. They're so light. I mean, I just feel like... I feel like this is kind of becoming the Glock 19 of EDC knives. So if you don't have one of those, you got to pick it up. So let's keep let's keep moving. Sticking with Benchmade, this is a more recent one of my knives that I picked up. This I do have the box for. This is a bailout, um, and for those of you that care, uh, 537SGY-1, and this is the uh, Tonto. This is a Tonto, not Reverse Tonto. I think um, I've got some Reverse Tontos that I will go over later but I absolutely love this knife. There's a store in Jacksonville called Strike Zone, and it's mostly uh, fishing kind of stuff, outdoor stuff, um, outdoor clothing, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but they also have a really good selection of ammunition. They sell some guns, but they also have a lot of really cool knives, mostly Benchmade. They seem to be a, an official Benchmade distributor, um, I would imagine, and I was in there and this night, I'm, I'm kind of a sucker for OD Green, so I definitely picked this one up. And, you know, it's not my favorite action, the, what is it, the Axis Lock on, on uh, Benchmades, but I don't mind it at all. And it's just another, kind of just like the, the bug out, where it's just very light, um, very thin, a little bit bigger, just so you can kind of see the side by side of the two. The size is, hmm, let me get them lined up there, a little bit bigger, but absolutely love that knife. I don't know, maybe if you're wearing some shorts or something that day and you still want to have a knife on you, it's nice to not have a bigger, uh, chunkier hunk of metal in your pocket. So let's go into, I'm going to go to, to the Microtech really quick. So this is a Microtech Ultratech. I do have the box for this one. This is an Ultratech TE Tactical Standard 123-1T. And I paid, the sticker was on the bottom there. I paid a lot of money for this knife. I shouldn't have paid that much money for this knife, but I absolutely love carrying this knife. It's another knife that is pretty, pretty thin and it's not too heavy in the pocket. It's definitely heavier than the bug out and the bailout because of the metal construction. But whenever it comes to these out the front knives like this, you don't get any better than Microtex and you don't get any better than Ultratex and they're just ridiculously sharp. I personally prefer the one-sided blade versus the double, they have those. I also don't really like serrations because I just, I find myself, um, on certain knives, if you're doing bushcraft type stuff or whatever, which I'm never doing, but um, I find that, that it's just not worth it to have those because that whenever you're opening boxes and stuff like that, the, the glue from the tape gets stuck on the serrations and it's a little harder to clean. But, um, you know, it's, it's completely personal preference, I feel like. But this is the Microtech Ultratech Black. There's so many colors from Microtech that you can get. Uh, I love their, they have a green one that I almost got one day. Oh, and the other thing, if I know I'm going to be driving a lot for on a day, um, I, I will usually keep uh, whatever pocket knife that I have to, to have a glass breaks uh, uh, on the bottom. So the bailout has one as well. And then this micro, I think most Microtechs have one. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so now let's get into my favorite brand. And that would be Protech. 
So Protec, I absolutely love this brand. They have a very loyal following. And this is a Malibu, a blacked out Malibu. I just recently sold one of my Malibus, which is, it was just a stone wash. This is the Reverse Tonto. I am a big fan of Reverse Tonto. I, I like this, the, just the overall look of them. Kind of looks like a shark fin of, in some way. And it just has such a classic look to it, a timeless look. I think Malibus are fairly new uh, on the market. They have not been around forever like some knives, knives have. But uh, this, this knife has just a, a fidget score of, of 10. Like you can just sit there, you push the button to lower, uh, let loose the, the blade, and you just, oh, I got my finger too close. You just flick it back out and you can just sit there and have fun with it. And then, so that's the black one. And then I actually went to Way of Knife online. They had one with the new texture on it. You can see that texture on the blade, on the handles rather. Um, that's a, I think that's a newer thing for the Malibu. So it just gives you a little bit more purchase on the grip. Um, again, with the Tonto. And what Way of Knife did was they did a blizzard wash on these scales. I think it was like another 30 bucks. Um, so something a little bit different. I really like the Stormtrooper look on stuff. Like I have a Tacoma and I kind of wish I had a white Tacoma where I could do black accents, um, black rims and all that kind of stuff. I have black rims, but it would just, I like that, that um, Stormtrooper look to stuff. So mostly white with black accents. So that's, I only have two Malibus, but I absolutely love carrying the Malibu. I think this is the SBR, short bladed rock eye, midnight blue handle, yeah, that's it. So you can already see the size of it. It's really not that big of a knife, but you can see again with the, that classic Protec button on there. And whenever you open up a Protec, it slams. This, these things slam out and it's like, hold on, or that knife would just go spinning across the room. That's that's what it feels like. This one's got some nice jimping and stuff on the top for you know whatever you had to do um, with this knife. But again, not my favorite style, a drop point kind of a style of a blade, but I really, really like this one. I think I got this from Way of Knife as well. Came out really nice. I like the blue a lot. I don't have a lot of blue stuff. So that's another Protec. Is this is the the uh, Protec Emerson, so pretty standard looking right off the the rip. Emerson, there is an Emerson knife that's very similar to this. I think I think you guys tell me in the comments. I think Emerson and Protec did a like a, a partnership on this knife or something because the regular Emersons are not flip outs like push buttons like uh, Protec has on theirs. So again, a really nice uh, Tonto. I love being able to open a box by, if like, you know, you don't want to jam the knife all the way down in the box and rip it across because usually you have something in there you don't want to get messed up. So I like being able to just use just that little, the little tip of the knife right there. Um, instead of on the top, you just use this one right here and then you can just kind of like go across and open the box. That was kind of scary. I did that across my hand. <laughs> um, but this is one of those knives that, you know, if things start getting, getting, if you start to do some wet work, some getting blood and guts everywhere, this is, a, this is the kind of knife that you want to grab because it's just, there's no movement, super solid. I do wish, let me get, let me know if you guys know of an Emerson that has a texture on the handles, because that's the one downside I don't like about this knife is just the overall smoothness of these. Kind of the same with um, the original Malibus as well. That they're just they're just pretty slippery in the hand. Not slippery, but you, there's just not as much grip there for you whenever you're holding it. But I, I absolutely love the Emerson. Let's see if I can get a nice focus on that. You can. I don't like that either. It's a little big, but that's probably a part of the you know brand partnership or whatever. But uh, you guys tell me. Maybe did Protec buy Emerson? I don't know. So, but I absolutely love this knife. And then this is another Protec that just fi watch how fast this thing just, they just fire out man so fast uh this one's a little bit i need to clean it clean it up a little because i've used this one quite a bit but uh this is the tactical response 3 the tr-3 uh, very popular protec knife uh if this is one that you know let's say you you walk up you walk up to to all of your knives and you're like i can only choose one forever 
this would be one that would be hard to say no to because it is just, it is a more tactical blade. I, I know that there are uh, SWAT police, special force type guys that are, are carrying these. I think that's why it is a tactical response. So it's the kind of knife that you can, you can just trust your life with if you need a blade, uh, whether that be for administrative type stuff or for, you know, having to do some damage. Um, all right, let's move on to getting almost done here. Yeah, let me take a break right here really quick before we get into the last parts of the, vi of, of, of the video talking about the knives. Somebody out there needs to hear this, that we're all working so hard. You're probably working really hard. You might have kids, wife, husband, whatever. Just remember that you're, you're, you're doing okay. You know, I, f I feel like today's culture is a little tough with the hustle culture. Uh, never, you're never doing enough. You got to try harder, push harder. Yeah, there's a lot of lazy people out there. Um, I tried my best to not be lazy, but I just wanted to just say that that you know you're out there, you're doing, you're doing your best, and that and sometimes we need to hear that that we are doing our best. We're going to work, we're providing for our family, um, we're trying to move our life forward. Maybe starting a business or starting this, starting that. That's kind of what I'm trying to do with this YouTube channel mixing hobby with maybe it could become a business of some sort, but I'm just really just doing it for the love right now. Whoever it is out there, you need to hear that. You're doing good. So just keep keep up, keep working hard. You're gonna make it, you're gonna be fine. But just take time for yourself, relax, take a mental health day whenever you can. Uh, go to the shooting range for me. That's a big thing for me for my mental health as I go to the shooting range and um, just take the day and you know space out. You don't have to worry about getting a job done or anything like that. You're just there having fun, enjoying what your, your hobbies are. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's move in to the Chris Reeve Sabenza. Definitely the biggest box that I have over here. These are all my, look at all these Protec, Protec boxes right here. Let me move these out of the way. So there's the, the Chris Reeve box. If you guys have one of these, you know, they come in a bigger box, but they're cool too. They come with a nice microfiber cloth. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Chris Reeve is the one that invented the line lock. Am I wrong on that? I thought I remember hearing that. Um, if he's not, he's the one that perfected it in my opinion. So you can see right here uh, from this angle, it's just got a really legit line lock. I think all Chris Reeve knives other than their fixed blades, I have a line lock and it's just so easy to actuate. Let me see if I can, if I can do it here. You can see that right there. Just, it's just so smooth and it locks in just perfect. To me, these, these knives are expensive, but you're paying for, if you're like me and you like knives and guns and cars and stuff like that, because you love fine craftsmanship and the best that America can do as far as, you know, you take taking, uh, small objects that have a purpose and perfecting them to the best of your ability. That's what I love about watches and all this kind of stuff. And it's hard to find a knife. It'd be hard to say that there's a knife out there that would uh, compete with the Chris Reeve knives on perfecting what they are. And they're just beautiful. And this is a small Sabenza, by the way. Uh, this is a small Sabenza 31 plane. So this, nothing fancy on these. All these knives, a lot of these Protex and stuff like that, you can go spend 10 grand, 12 grand or more on, on a Damascus with gold inlays and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, that's not my style. Uh, good investment, I guess, because they'll hold their value. But um, I just like the, just the plain knife here. I had my eyes on an Umnunzan. I think I'm saying that correctly but those are going for crazy money on eBay right now. Um, so, I, but I'm happy with this Chris Reeve knife. I, it is one that I I wouldn't mind maybe selling down the road at some point, just because I think I want a bigger, I want the bigger Sabenza, but um, I'm very happy with this knife. It's just very, it's small. If you can see next to that other, that Protec, it's it's about the same size there. It's, it's a pretty small knife. And if we put it next to a bigger knife like the Emerson, you can see, not that these are in any way the same type of knife, but you can just see. So some of us, I've, I used to be a ni small knife guy. Like I didn't like to, have, I didn't want to ever want to have a big knife in my pocket, but uh, I don't mind it now. I actually kind of prefer it because I also carry a, uh, a flashlight. I'll do another video on, on lights. I've got a lot of flashlights 
Um, I'll do another video on that just to talk about the EDC and then some of the ones I, the one I keep on my truck, the one I keep by the door, that kind of stuff. Lighting is very important. But um, I also, I always have a, a micro, I think it's a micro stream, stream light micro stream, it charges USB in my pocket. And then I have my knife in front of that because I usually am pulling the knife out more than I'm pulling the flashlight out. It's up to you, but it's nice that these companies offer small knives and they offer big knives. Uh, so you get to choose whatever it is that you want to use. All right, so that's it for this. Every morning I just walk up to this guy in my, in my bedroom and choose the knife that I'm gonna use for the day. Uh, so that's fun and I've, I've bought and sold and yeah, that's some money right there, but um, I'll sell some of them. Who knows, I might sell them all and keep one, I don't know. Uh, but the, that's the good thing with buying good quality knives and not cheap crap is that they hold their value and so in some cases you actually get more money for them um, because you never know. I think Chris Reeve, and I, they just said that they're going up on their prices and stuff like that too. So that probably just made the, the value of, of that Sabenza go up a little bit which is great. So, um, so in the, in my truck, I keep this cold steel knife and you know, this is kind of a worst case scenario. If something goes wrong. I've got some 550 cord on here. You never know if you would ever need that. Um, but I, I feel like this knife is, this is the SK five. I feel like this knife is only like a hundred bucks. It's the SRK, SRK SK five. I think that's it. Uh, search and rescue knife, I think is SRK, search and rescue knife. Um, love the feel of it. That has that nice rubber grip on there. But this is a knife that if somehow you had to get stuck out in the woods or, you know, having to be around campfire or whatever, this is a knife that you can actually uh, start breaking down some wood and, and making um, kindling and all that kind of stuff with. And I like that it already has the um, sheath that you can easily just strap on, throw it in a bag, whatever. So that this knife I keep in my truck and especially because it's such a, a cheap knife that it's actually wouldn't be a bad idea to have another one. But if it got stolen or something like that, you know, it's I'm not out too much money. This one, on the other hand, uh, you guys, you know what this is? I'll give you a second. I am a big fan of the terminal list before the show came out. I, I read all the books. Um, I actually was gonna read them again. I just love them so much. And in the book and in the show, James Reese, the main character, has these axes that he does some killing with. Those are a little bit expensive. Those are like $700 to $1,000 and there's a long wait to get them. This is a Winkler knife. And this is the Drop Point Crusher Maple. I got this on eBay for a, for a pretty good deal. And um, man, I mean, can you see just the quality? Full tang all the way through. Um, this thing's not gonna break on you. Again, wouldn't, wouldn't have any qualms trusting this out in, in the woods, uh, dressing up an animal outside that you've just hunted. Comes in this nice leather sheath. One little story about this knife is I, when I first got it, I was using it as my steak knife. Like, I, you know, it's, it's just cool to use a, an awesome knife whenever you're eating steak. And I messed up the finish on it. I, I guess you guys tell me what I did wrong. I, I was cleaning the knife afterwards using Dawn soap or whatever, and I guess may, and it just started wearing the finish down on on the blade um, when I was cleaning it. Maybe I should have just you know rinsed it and left it. Um, but I reached out to Winkler Knives and they refinished it for me. So they, they're great customer service. They know their knives are, are a little expensive, but all their knives are you know handmade quality, quality knives. I mean, how can you beat that? The look of that knife and the handles on that. I mean, good grief, just absolutely beautiful craftsmanship. And that's what I love. And that's what I don't mind spending my money on. So anyway, um, that is a beautiful knife. Definitely would recommend. And it comes with, you can actually, you know, it's ready to put on your belt or something like that. Should you need to do that? Um, I think that is it for this video. I hope I didn't go on too long. Uh, one more time, just please feel free to leave me some messages. Did I have that in the, did I have that in the shot the whole time over here? Could you see? Oh, that's the knives. Okay. There we go. thought I had my backdrop in the, in the shot. Let me show you guys what the backdrop looks like. These are my headphones that I use to monitor the audio with. Uh, here, are you ready for this? I'm full at 24 millimeter. If you guys care about camera stuff. 
So it's just a wall in one of the bedrooms in my house that I made into a studio. And I got a nice black backdrop and hung it up, taped it up, and here we go. You'd never know, right? I mean, I think it looks pretty good. I think it sounds okay. Anyway, I'm a bit of a perfectionist since I do this for a living. So I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say in the comments about the video. I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe. And I look forward to uh, talking to you guys again in the, in the future. Um, I want to do more stuff. You, if you followed my channel a little bit here, um, I started it only not that long ago. I got the Shadow System CR920 um, concealed carry handgun. Made a bunch of videos on that. I had a couple issues and stuff like that. So kind of the, chronicling the journey of that. But um, I also go to the range and I have uh, my Sony uh, camera on the side of my helmet. Not helmet, but my ear pro. And I'm trying to bring you guys a little bit of a different shooting perspective than you see in typical videos. So I want to be getting out to the range a little bit more and shooting more and bringing you guys along with me essentially at the range. So um, a lot of us, while, you, while you're sitting there at your cubicle at work or at lunch or whatever, you know, you can be joining me out on the range and um, having a good time. So anyway, I just like, I want to connect with you guys and uh, just have a, a good time on here on YouTube. So leave me some comments down below. I appreciate you watching, subscribing, liking, all that nonsense. I will see you in the next video.